incredibly validating that so many people who are so skilled weren't able to do it and I was able to do it. It's just so much. <laughs> She is the very first woman to win the History Channel's Alone Survival Series. Wania Tebow spent months by herself in the Arctic with barely any food. Now she is sharing her story in her memoir, Never Alone, A Solo Arctic Survival Journey. And she joins us in studio with more on her feats of strength here. Welcome. Thanks for being with us. Thanks it so is much. truly amazing what you did here. This is part of the History Channel's Alone Solo Survival Challenge. So for viewers who are unfamiliar, what is this and what goes into it? Yeah, so it is a pretty substantial challenge where participants are allowed to bring 10 items of their choosing from a particular list, not any items in the world, no rifle and ammunition or rod and reel, and dropped into the wilderness in 10 separate locations to survive for as long as they can. And it's set up as a competition, so the one who lasts the longest wins. Now, and we're watching you, so there are cameras involved, but usually there's a camera person there as well. Not the case here, right? Not you on alone. the camera yourself. Yeah, You're we're, truly we're dropped alone. with our 10 items and a case full of camera equipment. Wow. So, yes, it's a completely self filmed journey. You are absolutely by yourself. What was your strategy to winning this show? Oh my goodness. Well, there were so many components. Certainly, I was in very harsh climates where I knew that the resources were going to be limited and were going to be drying up significantly during my time out. So my two big focuses were getting a really good shelter that could withstand Arctic winter storms and putting up food. That one didn't go as well as the shelter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was the biggest challenge here? Was it getting food, finding food out there? You know, there were so many different challenges and I definitely ate significantly less than I would have liked to out there. But the hunger, while it was really intense and while I dropped a lot of weight, I lost 50 pounds while out wow. there on season six, so pretty substantial. Um, but honestly, the hardest part of my whole time was coming back home. The life was so beautiful. It was everything I'd ever dreamed of. And coming back from that back to the modern world of, you know, lights and television and social media and automobiles, that was really the most challenging part. That was the part. shock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was very shocking. You know, I know you talk to a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of folks say this is something they could never do in a million years. They can't imagine themselves in your shoes. But I think part of what you say in the book is that this is something that people can do. People can do more more than they believe, right? That's exactly right. That's part of why it felt so important to share the story from my own perspective because the show always, you know, shows the most dramatic and dangerous and wild parts of it. And I wanted to show the beauty and the the transformation and the healing and also to show people that, you know, I'm not some big buff military person. I'm a small person and I have the same kinds of skills that all of our ancestors had. So I believe that all of us are capable of this and the book is partly to demonstrate that to people and also to give them the experience vicariously if they are never going to go out into the Arctic wilderness to survive on their own. They can at least understand <laughs> what went idea. into it, right? What exactly. are some other uh, messages you want people to take away from this book? Great question. Uh, one of my primary messages is that we have this idea as modern humans that the natural world is out there and then we humans are separate from it. And it's really important to me to break down that myth. I feel like that is one of the the biggest issues in our modern world today is this feeling of disconnection and kind of looking to fill those holes with all kinds of of things that aren't necessarily healthy but we we come from nature we are still part of nature that's still within us and there's still a place for us within nature well you say you never really truly felt alone but one thing i want to ask you about because you're an only child I was an only child, and one of the things we have to learn early on is how to be by ourselves and how to entertain ourselves as well. Do you think being an only child helped you in this experience? I really do think that was a big part of my strength. I think that learning to, as you say, entertain myself and be company for myself was a, a big factor for me, but also the fact that I, I was trained as a naturalist, my degree is in environmental science, and so the natural world is where I go to for companionship, for solace, for curiosity and joy. And so having that within me. And I think part of that was from being an only child. I didn't have siblings. I had nature. So going to that, having that be a place of comfort for me already really helped me out there. And absolutely, it was, that's what I mean by never alone is that I didn't, I wasn't as aware of leaving the world of humans as I was entering this wilder community and making myself a part of it. Okay. Well, Nia Tebow, thank you so much for being here in our new book, Never Alone.
And congratulations on winning, by Thank the way. Thank you very much. Well yes. done. <laughs> All right, Studio 13 Live.